Hello everybody, Peter of England. Today's video is on Area 52 notary services. Uh, since the launch of Area 52, we have been promising that the notarial service for Area 52 would be launched, and so we're happy now to say that that time has come and we have the, the full faculty and facilities to offer this to you. Um, for all those people who have become uh, um, registered or members of Area 52. For those of you who don't know what I'm speaking about, then you need to go to the website and look at area52.life um, and scroll through the website. It's very comprehensive and look at the uh, area which says notarial services. So that being said, what I'm going to do now is to fill out some of the reasons why you might be interested in notary services. Um, notary services predominantly are for those individuals who want documents um, asserting or verifying or giving a credibility to them for presenting in, um, should we say, various administrative or legal uh, frameworks or in many instances in other jurisdictions. So typically, if you want something verifying in one country to prove to another country that it is, it is valid or genuine or has been done um, voluntarily or without duress or coercion, then the notary is the place to go. That having been said, um, some of the topics that we think you should start to look at for this notary service. Some of these might not make sense to you straight off the bat. But when I finish the presentation, then hopefully that might be more of a, um, a, a cognizer for you to say, yeah, I can see what's coming down the road here. This is why I might want to be distancing myself from the, uh, the environment or the society that's been welded around me, which could only be described as a Luciferian satanic uh, mayhem that you need to get out of or do something about. So the type of things I think that a notary typically will deal with for you are things like, um, I've changed my name, um, that wasn't me on the speeding camera, um, that looks like someone else, or I wasn't in London, or I wasn't in that part of the country on that particular day and time, um, that address is no longer um, appropriate for me, uh, and various things like that. Um, a statutory declaration or an affidavit are generally the things that notaries deal with, but they can also deal with things like matrimonial problems, wills, uh, trust documents, a verification that a signature isn't yours or a document has been forged, if you think that's the case. So um, what I would run through now is a list of the things that the notary service of Area 52 as a sovereign state can offer you. And don't forget, um, make sure you do look at the Montevideo Convention 1933, um, which actually stated that a state, there's a lot of states there, if a state um, has created itself, then it isn't dependent upon other states' recognition for it to be valid or recognized in any un, uh, international law. It's what's called the self-declaratory nature of statehood. So the, there can be no objection to the validity of the state. Um, it's very similar to the situation that's went on since 1917 um, with, um, with Palestine being recognized as a state with the, what's called the Balfour Declaration, when in effect the Rothschilds came along and just decided that piece of land is okay for us, but in fact, uh, or for the Zionist community generally, but it was never ever in the hands of the, the British to be able to hand it over to anyone. They didn't have property rights or title rights. So the type of things that the notary service can uh, help you with. And this, I'm going to read from these just so that I don't miss them. Uh, notice of status. So notice of status filing um, for, let's say, property transactions or shares or ownership of, of anything that needs notifying. 
uh, notice of citizenship or change of citizenship or a declaration maybe that you become stateless or electing to become stateless. Uh, a statutory declaration and some of those topics I covered earlier, uh, i.e. Uh, I, uh, I'm no longer to be regarded as this name or I refuse under, should we say, the Terrorism Act 2000 in the United Kingdom to continue paying my taxes to HMRC because um, I believe they are funding um, a terrorist organization or sending money to buy weapons and armaments for wars, uh, that type of thing. I will not fund the BBC license um, anymore because of the fact that it's a propaganda arm of the controlling interests within uh, the UK government and the puppeteers, uh, sorry, the puppet master behind who are controlling the puppeteers. Um, a will that can be notarized, ownership of vehicle or notification to the driving license issuing authority uh, or the ownership, uh, for example, in the DVLA in the United Kingdom of a vehicle transfer, uh, notice of an injury or a trespass upon your person that's been perpetrated, uh, obviously for issuing into a court or a tribunal. Um, Notice of your unalienable rights, which is something I'm going to touch on in a minute. Notice of a corporate fiction attempting to communicate with a living man. Um, notice of uh, an intent not to pay a particular charge or fine. Uh, notice of a request for a ledger or a, an apportionment, apportionment of debt. Uh, notice of a claim for an account. Uh, or a declaration that maybe a closed account is still available for what's called set off and adjustment. Um, notice of bias and obligation uh, to recuse oneself um, because you are a silent, comprom compromised intermediary and an agent of a false entry uh, entity, sorry, that would be maybe addressed to a judge or a legal organization because if you can prove that they are in or on the payroll of a foreign entity, then that's something that you can, um, you can basically show they're biased, they are um, coerced, and they are on the payroll and cannot therefore be independent of a foreign uh, of an independent organization. One of the prime things for people who might end up in court uh, is listening to the judge bang on about what you have to do and what your obligations uh, Need to, um, need to be, and this is what's called a, a challenge on what's called personum subject matter jurisdiction. So for anyone or any of you who are going to end up in court or seemingly uh, have been taken into court or are about to go to court um, and don't really know how to handle yourself, um, one of the things I would suggest is you can, you can say this or paraphrase it as best you can, um, and this is to the prosecutor who's acting as a trustee, but addressing both the prosecutor and the judge, okay? It basically goes, because they're making assumptions and you need to rebut them, I seem to be a state-created entity. That's because you've been dragged there as the all capitals birth certificated name or, or the, the name that was sent on the summons. And so the state must be responsible for the legal title. So if it's the state that's handling you, therefore the state must own the property. Therefore, from that follows the fact that the state must be holding the legal title which says it owns you. I did a video on this many years ago which is currently featured on the, the YouTube website. So the state must be responsible, the legal title crimes, uh, sorry, the legal title always claims the responsibility. So does the question then to the judge, does the court have any evidence in writing to the title of the body of the man or woman who is standing in front of you in the court at this moment? And the answer obviously will be that they don't. So if not, then it has no what's called personum subject matter jurisdiction. Um, and so that's what I would suggest that you run with. Um, and so that basically states that the responsibility, therefore, 
looks like it's staying with the prosecutor and the judge, and therefore they're on the hook for whatever the charge is, and charge means money, and current means currency, uh, that you're currently being charged with, unless they can pass that ownership over and on to you. So those are some of the things I would suggest you look to uh, use the Area 52 notary service for. And why I think it's important is we're coming up to um, Remembrance Sunday um, in two days' time. There's a lot of controversy going on in the UK at the moment. We'll focus on that at the moment because we are predominantly a, a, uh, a UK-based organisation. Uh, and what we find is we've got people like uh, Stephen Yaxley Lennon, also known as Tommy, Tommy Robinson, going onto the, onto the streets in London, um, trying to arrange a private or peaceful protest with a group of followers. And many other groups are going onto the street and either being told that they either can't or shouldn't, or there's a whole reason of, of excuses that are being poured out. But what you've got to try and realize is, where do a lot of these things emanate from? Let's say in the UK. It's from something called, an organization called the Association of Chief Police Officers. So these are people um, who are in the police or in various constabularies up and down the country. And they are of a rank of, I think it's, uh, they have to be a superintendent uh, or above. They meet fairly regularly. It's an elected independent body. These are the people who are responsible for putting the commerce, the private companies behind the scenes that provide the tasers, the special type of handcuffs, the weapons, the holsters, the batons, the protective gear that makes them look like SWAT teams, the cameras, um, and the AI and everything else that you would regard now as being something of the Orwellian nightmare that's coming home to roost. People like Tommy Robinson uh, seem to think that the police uh, aren't going to be acting to stop these um, protesters or the people who are demonstrating pro-Palestine, pro-Gaza. Um, and they would maintain maybe that the the police are just lazy and aren't doing something because the local commander, I don't know, he wants a quiet weekend. It's not the case. The police have been stood down. The entire operation is worldwide. And these, these situations that are on the street are very, very serious. And it's something that is actually creeping along through all parts of society. And it's coming in as what's called stealth creeping it in by stealth, and it's, it's becoming more pervasive, but it's happening in such a speed that you're hardly noticing it. And so that's why people aren't protesting it. So there's war on the door, you've got a major problem, and everybody seems to be in it. Therefore, places like Area 52, area52.life, the link is at the bottom there, are a means for you to begin to try and distance yourself from the tyranny and the, the craziness that's been operated or welded around you. Um, so you've got, you know, you've got this scenario of a, almost a globalist war on the door agenda. Um, and where it's going to break out for a World War III, if things do come in threes and it's anybody's plan, then um, you could say, well, it could be Russia, Ukraine pulling into uh, Eastern Europe, traveling west, or it could be in the Middle East with what's happening there. They can play this any way they, they want. But what you've got is a massive immigration situation in all of these areas and one of the things that you've got is a Trojan horse. It would appear that the Israeli Defense Force have confirmed that the document that many people thought was fraudulent or maybe fake news is not, and that is the fact that the Netanyahu Israeli Zionist Biden neocon regime is looking to transplant 
replace the 2.2 million Gazaeans out of that area um, and transfer them to Spain, Greece, Canada, and maybe other countries, I don't know, but those were the ones that were named. So what we would have there is the potential of 2.2 million people being segregated and pushed into communities where they don't naturally belong uh, and maybe have uh, sympathy or a predilection towards groups such as uh, Hezbollah or uh... so who knows um, not that that's a, a major problem but what I'm trying to do is to highlight to you that you are seemingly most people think that this is just just happening it isn't it's planned it's orchestrated it's it's put together in the finest detail the organizations that are behind it um, when you have a problem or a strike on the rail network if you have problems with um, uh, trade unions generally if you have a problem with um, anything that's going on in society where there's a day of action or there's some some strike action whether that's in the national health service or wherever it's through these trade unions and they are all manipulated and all owned lock stock and barrel the mullahs the priests the rabbis um, are all under the control in many instances of the elites behind the curtain and it's as simple as that so you're getting yourself into greater and greater difficulties you are seemingly and this is for all those people possibly uh, and intentionally who are taking to the streets to protest against something uh, over this weekend this coming up remembrance Sunday um, just to remind you that all of this warring in the past, uh, the First World War, the Second World War, um, Vietnam, uh, the Korean Wars, um, they've all gone on and we were always told they f are for the benefit of, of something. What that something is, who knows. But there is something that many of you are forgetting or overlooking and that's when you go onto the streets and when you end up uh, in your day-to-day -day activities, you're forgetting there's something called the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And that is a series of human rights that are totally, and I have to, one hundred percent inalienable and what I mean by that is they can't be taken away from anyone anywhere on the planet now if you look at the policy document for the Universal Declaration of Human Rights as it was put forward uh, in 1944 originally coming in in 45 46 it was a document to protect all peoples everywhere on the basis of a peace for the world and the rights and obligations that were imposed were for protection. They could not be taken away. Inalienable means just that. It doesn't mean, oh, when the government changes, we can do this, we can do that, we can do the other. So what I want today to do, uh, what I want to do today is to remind you that when you are on the street, when you are posting on social media, you have a right to say within not within reason reason generally to express your opinion however you choose to do it if you want to pray outside a um an abortion center in the uk as one lady did uh, you can't be arrested for it you have an absolute right to be able to maintain your beliefs your conscience and everything that that entails as long as you're not physically causing uh, problems or damage to people or property and that isn't because you said something that they don't agree with I mean you know if if you have one glass of sherry a month uh, to a Mormon 
uh, in Salt Lake City, you're an alcoholic. So you can't be dependent upon what other people are thinking and saying. And to that end, what I'm going to do is just go through one or two things now uh, about the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It's worth emphasizing this. So excuse me, not looking into the camera straight away now. It's a milestone document on the, what's called the history of human rights. Uh, the recognition of the inherent dignity of the equal and inalienable rights of all members of the human family, it says. Human family. We seem to have drifted a long, uh, a long way from that. And what it seems to be is as far as the British and United States justice system, uh, hello Julian Assange, hello um, what's going on in world uh, politics at the moment, that the, the, the lady sitting atop of the, the, uh, the justice buildings, uh, she's taken a bit of a holiday yeah? because they can seemingly do whatever they want. Um, I will go through Article 1. So these are things, people, that you should be saying to the police. These are people you should be saying to the judge or anyone that's trying to interrupt your peaceful rights um, when you're doing your, your whatever it is that you're doing. So I would suggest you go along, look them up, um, copy a few off, and actually challenge the police on it. If you want to arrest me for um, being a, uh, putting my, my, my uh, opinions and religious beliefs together, then let's see and challenge that in court and see how it goes. Because all human beings are born, born free and equal in dignity and rights. Um, all peoples, Article 2. Everyone is entitled to all the rights and freedoms set forth in this declaration without distinction of any kind. Article 3. Everyone has the right to life, liberty and security. Article 5. No one shall be subject to torture or to cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment or punishment. How about Julian Assange being kept in Belmarsh without, without a, a, a proper trial or having been sentenced? Um, Article 7, all are equal before the law and entitled without any discrimination to equal protection. Uh, no one shall be subjected to arbitrary arrest, Article 9. Uh, Article 12, no one shall be subject to arbitrary interference with his privacy, family, home, or correspondence. Yeah? So that means they can't go and snoop on your emails. They can't go and uh, take your internet records. Article 14, uh, everyone has the right to seek and enjoy in other countries asylum from persecution. Everyone has the right to a nationality. Area 52, you can change your nationality. No one, Article 15.2, no one shall be arbitrarily deprived from his nationality, nor denied the right to change his nationality. Uh, Article 18, the biggie officer. If you're trying to arrest me, let's challenge this one in court or in the International Court of Justice, shall we? Everyone has the right to freedom of thought conscience and religion. This right includes the freedom to change his religion or belief and freedom either alone or in community with others and in public or private to manifest his religion or belief in teaching, practice, worship and observance. Article 19, everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. This right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive and impart information, here it is, and ideas through any media regardless of frontiers. You have that right. Um, and I will quickly go down to Article 30 now, just to seal it, just to show these these declarations and these inalienable rights can't be taken off you just because some different government thinks it's more opportune to take them than not. Um, because it says, nothing in this declaration may be interpreted as implying for any state, group or person, any right to engage in any activity or to perform any act aimed at the destruction of any of the rights and freedoms set forth therein. 
That means they cannot dismantle them, they can't reinterpret them, they can't say, well, we just don't like it because we're a bit far right leaning or we're a bit left leaning. So that's really what I'm trying to roll out with you today. Um, there's a lot going on in the world. There's a lot of problems um, and it doesn't matter which side and whose side, what we've got to say is or ask who's paying for it all. Um, where does the money come from for Hamas's paragliders? Where do the anti-personnel mines um, come from for the Ukrainian uh, or for the wars in Croatia? Where does all this material come from? Where does the money come from for the billions that have been sent to Ukraine? Yeah, it's not being transferred on horseback in gold by some wealthy merchant or mandarin of business. It's all going down through the, the, uh, the swift and uh, big terminals. It's all been instigated by people like Jamie Dimon at uh, JP Morgan, by the Rothschild Bank, by the Bank of England, the central banks, Andrew Bailey there as the governor. That's where it's all coming from. So it isn't happening by accident. Who's paying? Uh, the piper calls the tune. All of this nonsense here is nothing more than an ongoing social engineering product uh, and uh, project that is leading you into ever-decreasing tighter circles until you'll almost, if you have the opportunity, you will disappear up your own backside and they will win as they choose to win. These, these groups, these people, um, whether it's France or whether it's Italy or whether it's the UK, UK. I'm looking at the migrant situation now, the so-called refugees. They have been brought to the country without the people's consensus. The people don't necessarily want it. They haven't been invited. They haven't been democratically consulted. And if they were refugees, then they have to escape from the war or conflict zone and be uh, allowed to stay in the first peaceful region that they come to. Not bust two, three, five thousand kilometers uh, or miles across the globe to be transported across the English Channel by the French so that they can be then picked up by UK border force halfway across and then put in five star and three star, it doesn't matter what star hotels, there's an agenda running there, folks. The agenda is the next part of the play. And if they then turn up knocking on your door uh, with, with, with weapons and in some type of military or paramilitary uniform, you'll know that the Trojan horse um, that we've, uh, we've looked at, I don't know where that is if I've put it up, the Trojan horse here um, has, done, has done its work. So please... Um, Look to be a bit more vigilant, be a bit more creative. The big thing I would say is to please just get yourself um, a little bit motivated. Tommy Robinson and all those people who are going on the street to demonstrate in protest of keeping English values and that we don't want mass Islamization, even the Mohammedans, even the Arab people, they don't want to live under Sharia law. It's brutal and it has consequences that once that would be allowed to be um, uh, bedded in or f uh, founded on a, a general concept, um, life wouldn't be worth living and that's why they don't live. It's a marginalization, marginalization of terrorist activity put there to bring fear into you. Where did ISIS or ISIL disappear to? Yeah. Now we haven't got them. We've got Hamas. Hamas comes from probably the Hebrew word and the slight Arabic variation called Hamas, C H A M A S, which basically means Satan. So it is no, no, um, no surprise that they're using this nomen nomenclature and these these words of these genies and these demons to try and propagate hate and dissent in the country. 
It's going to happen as it has, is doing in the United States. It's happening throughout Europe. And so I don't know whether people will wake up to the fact. But for now, if you're going and protesting, try and use your um, Universal Declaration here. Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Those are absolutely inviolable and should be pushed to the limit. Don't forget Area 52. Go to area52.life. Um, look at the notary services section and that will give you a link then. And I would suggest everybody out there, for no other reason, let's just start with local government, um, property-owning interests for things like your car, vehicles and uh, other paraphernalia start to make a notification that you're taking the property back and that you are no longer um, willing to subject yourself to this tyrannous regime that's pounding you into the ground um, and that's it. So thank you very much for watching. Um, circulate it and send it to whoever you think would benefit from it and don't forget to hit the subscribe and like buttons.